What's up guys, special video for you today. We are gonna be going over 10 different routes that all wide receivers need to know. We're gonna be breaking down all routes on the route tree from zero through nine versus the exact situations that you will face in a game that are the most challenging. So like a slant versus inside shade press, a post route versus inside shade off man coverage. We're gonna be going over all of that in this video today. So it's gonna give you a ton of value and we're excited to show this to you. But also fellas, if you're a wide receiver or quarterback and would like to train with us this off season, we're coming out to 15 different cities across the U.S. for two-day long QB and wide receiver camp. So check out that very first link in the description below. You can get access, you can sign up, and you figure out what our camps are all about. We're going to be coming out to San Francisco, California, Miami, Florida, Las Vegas, Nevada. All three of those camps are completely sold out, and all of these camps will sell out probably two, three months in advance, fellas. After that, we're going to be coming out to Charlotte, North Carolina, Portland, Oregon, Dallas, Texas, Nashville, Tennessee, Chicago, Illinois, Buffalo, New York, Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia, Houston, Texas, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Detroit, Michigan, Boise, Idaho, and we'll be finishing it off in Los Angeles, California. So again, if you want some more information, want to know how you can sign up to work with myself, my staff of coaches, check out that very first link in the description below. Let's get started with this video. So the first route we're going to be going over on this route tree is a zero route, which is a five-yard hitch. So this five-yard hitch you're going to be looking at from DJ Moore. We're going to talk about the two ways that you can run this hitch and how you would run it versus an inside shade man-to-man -man coverage DB, which is the hardest look that we have to run this hitch route again. So let's play this thing full speed. So on a five-yard hitch, we want to treat it like any regular route, like a 12-yard curl, a 15-yard comeback. We are trying to make this DB think that we are running a what? We are running a fade. We just have to be able to do that for five yards or sometimes a hitch route is ran maybe six back to five but for that six yard break that five yard break maybe it's a four yard hitch whatever the case may be we have to push vertical so what that means is I got to make sure that I'm coming off the ball fast I got to make sure my stance is correct I got to make sure that I have a good amount of weight I like 60 to 70 percent of my weight on my front leg my back foot isn't too wide so I can just explode off the ball no fall steps and get off and go so we got to make sure we run with some speed second thing on the five yard hitch we have to make sure that we are running in full stride and then for those five yards my pad level cannot raise up I need to stay in an explosive pad level position because when I got a DB who's in man-to-man -man coverage he is reading my hips he is reading my body language so if I have a slight forward lean with my body language that is more likely to get him to open up his hips because if I have a DB who's an inside shade man-to-man -man coverage like this the goal is to get him to open up the gate aka open up his hips to where they are facing the opposite end zone and the only way I'm going to do that is by selling fade now at the break point there are two ways to run a hitch there's a way that DJ Moore runs the hitch where you break with your outside foot. We call that a trigger step. So the hitch route, honestly, guys, because it's a six to five yard route, should be we should be in and out of this break in two to three steps. Three steps at the absolute max. Anything more than that, I feel takes a little bit too long. So when you break with this outside foot, that is your trigger step. Now, again, you could run it two ways, like we said, but let's say you're breaking with the outside foot. You want to snap down. That is the step where you are going to be dropping your hips. Even on a five-yard route, even on a six-yard route, it is very important that you are sitting your butt down in the chair. You're being violent with your hips, and your chest is dropping almost to your quad. We want to be aggressive. Now, the second step on this needs to pivot because that pivot step is what's going to get your hips flipped. So your third step can hook back around, put the brakes on, and we can decelerate and stop in three steps. So it's outside snap inside pivot outside hook and then we're off now another way that you could run this hitch is this is usually if the hitch is at like five yards you could break on your inside foot so let's say on this step right here you would drop your hips then you take your outside foot and you pop it around and you're out in two steps so you could get out in two you could get out in three but either break you have to make sure that we are trying to get this db to flip his hips by us selling vertical so let's play this thing full speed one more time this is a great example of a five yard hitcher from dj moore again some people might consider that a push off and he probably got away with a little bit of a push but within five yards it's very very unlikely that a referee is going to call it unless you just shove this guy in the back keep your elbows in tight swat him on the shoulder on the hip two points of control so we could get separation Okay, so now, next route we're going to be going over is a one route on the route tree, and that is going to be a five-yard out. Now, a complex look, I think everybody knows how to probably run a five-yard out, but a complex look that a lot of wide receivers don't know how to run a five-yard out against, and this is a common look that they will see, is a DB when he is in outside shade press coverage. So if we have outside shade press coverage from a DB, and I have to run a five-yard out, this DB is sitting at like two to three yards, and my break is at five, right? I'm probably not going to be able to give him a release and stack over the 
top of him because his technique is sitting right where I actually have to run this route, right? So what we would want to do is we would want to try to attack his inside hip and his inside shoulder with my five yard break. I'm still breaking at five, but we would want to sell like we were crossing his face. We were pushing vertical to flip his hips similar to the hitch route, but just in the opposite direction. So this is Sky Moore running a simple five yard out here, but a C, you see how he's able to get separation by attacking the inside hip and shoulder of the DB. Now, why do we want to do that? Let's talk about it. Because this DB is outside shade for a reason. Anytime that you are running routes, I don't care what type of route it is on the route tree, whether it's a short route like a five yard out, whether it's a five yard hitch, the things that determine how I run my routes are usually based off of this DB's leverage and the distance he has from me. Right, So if this DB is outside leverage, but he's eight yards away, I'm probably just going to run the five yard out. I don't have to worry about it. But he's outside shade at three to four yards, and I got to run a five yard out. I got to worry about it. I got to do something different to get separation. It dictates my route, the leverage and the distance of the DB from me. So he's outside shade for a reason. Prevent the outside route, which is kind of a problem because that's the route we are running. So if my game plan is I'm just going to go at him and then try to run outside of him, this DB is going to keep his leverage, get hands, and force me to that sideline. And when you get rerouted to to the outside on an outside breaking route that is not enough room for the quarterback so what we have to do is we have to attack his inside hip and his inside shoulder head so that inside hip and inside shoulder he comes off the ball gives him a move and you see how he's pushing vertical running with good pad level running with good stride, running with good speed. Very, very similar to that hitch, fellas. And then we're able to put the brakes on and slip underneath him for that five yard out. So five yard out versus outside shade press, that's how you would do it. There are a few different types of brakes on this five yard out, right? You see how Sky Moore breaks and he has this like kind of real heavy indicator cut where it's like a hard like stick if you will i call it a stick it, sometimes on a five yard out if we got zone coverage we could do like a speed cut where it's more of a rounded break right it kind of varies on the situation but this is how you would run it versus outside shade press or catch technique which i feel is the hardest look so now a two on the route tree is going to be a three-step slant. Now, I think everybody, I'm assuming, knows how to run a three-step slant. If you're lined up with your left foot up, obviously you're going to be going stepping with your right foot first, left foot, and then breaking off of the right foot on a slant to the inside right? Now, if I have a DB who's lined up inside shade, that's kind of a problem, right? Because as we know from our outside shade press on that five yard out route, that DB's leverage dictates what he is trying to take away and what he's trying to give us. So when he's lined up shaded to the inside, what is he doing? He's trying to take away the inside. He does not want us to run a slant, a dig, or a post. So what do we have to do with my release? I obviously don't want to force it. Because like, let's say for example, when we have a slant route, usually especially from the outside, we usually have a slant and then my inside receiver is doing like a flat or my inside receiver is also doing a slant, right? In basic terms, obviously there are some times when it's different. But if I got double slants, let's say my slots run a slant, am I try to force the inside release on this slant, this DB is going to get hands, he's going to reroute me to the inside and the spacing is going to be off. And if this DB gets hands, the timing is going to be off. So what we'd want to do is we'd want to angle my three steps on the slant at this DB's, you guessed it. It, outside shoulder and outside hitch. Very, very similar to the five yard hitch that we discussed. So let's watch what Gallup does here. So he comes off the ball, bam. Three step slant, pushes vertical, got that DB to open up his hips. That's how we'd want to run that slant versus inside shade press. We're attacking the outside shoulder and outside hip. Make him think that it's a fade. So again, guys, there's kind of a trend here, right? When it's a short route, and it's inside breaking, like a hitch or like a slant. And that DB sitting his leverage to right where I'm going to break, right? So I'm breaking it like three yards. He's sitting inside shade at two to three yards. We usually split them in half. We attack a specific shoulder or a specific hip. If he's sitting outside shade and I got a break, if his leverage is to the side of my break and the route is within five yards and he's sitting at five yards or closer, we got to pick a shoulder to attack. So in this case, let's play at full speed one more time. Gallup attacks the outside for three hard steps. Notice how that is very, very similar to DJ Moore's route. It's just a different type of cut. First step's one. You see how explosive this step is. Look at his pad level. He's got a slight lean forward. I tell my wide receivers that you want to have your chest just slightly ahead of your waist, and you want to open up those strides. Take long strides, have that slight forward lean, and that's what can get that DB to flip open. So that's how you'd run a slant versus inside shade press. This release is called a diamond release. It kind of looks like, you know, like a baseball diamond, like all the way to first base, that 45 degree degree angle. That's essentially what it's like. So that's a great release there from Gallup. That's how you run that slant route, that two route. Okay. So now we're going to be talking about a three route, which is a comeback. So a comeback right here, 
I'm, I'm assuming all of you guys know a comeback. A comeback is where you go up, you break it. Usually it's about 12 or 15 yards and you break back towards the sideline. It's going to be like 15 back to 12. Now, I sh want to show this example because this is pretty much a textbook break on a comeback where this receiver is able to get out of the route in three steps, which is incredibly challenging to do. But I want to talk about how a lot of wide receivers can at least shoot for this or maybe even do this with the right technique in the right form. So let's play this full speed. So he comes off the ball pushes up vertical, pushes up vertical, drops. And you see how fast he's able to get in and out of that break, right? So let's talk about the break point, right? So very, very similar to that five-yard hitch, very, very similar to the five-yard out, very similar to the slant. Look at his pad level, look at his speed, and look at his stride all the way up into the break. You notice a trend here, right? If you guys want to be a better receiver and you want to be a better route runner, which is why I'm assuming you're watching this video, guys, like selling vertical is the foundation of being a great route runner. If you want to get separation, we got to we got to master being able to sell fade. And selling fade comes down to your body language, your speed, and your stride. And that is a mindset, guys. Every single drill that you do in the off season, every single time you're doing drill work, you should be emphasizing your pad level, your stride, and your speed. That's what I do with my wide receivers, and I'm confident that they're always going to be the best route runners on their team. They may not be the fastest. Maybe they don't have the best hands. You know, maybe that's something that they need to work on. But I guarantee you, they will have the best routes because they know how to sell vertical and they know how to change direction while selling vertical. So on a comeback route, obviously you're further downfield. You're like 15 yards downfield, 12 yards downfield. So it's harder to change direction than a five or a six yard hitch. That five and six yard hitch, it's, guys, let's just face it, it's a shorter route, it's easier to change direction when you're running hard. When you're running hard, full speed, downfield, 15 yards, it is incredibly challenging to be able to break on a dime like this wide receiver does here. This is a five star wide receiver, this is Jeremiah Smith. He's out of um, South Florida, I wanna say he's in either Miami or Fort Lauderdale, um, but I wanna say he goes to that, my, that Chaminade school down there, I wanna say, and um, great talent, he's got some great film, and this is a very, very high level route. Right, So on a comeback, ideally, you want your trigger step to be with your inside foot. This is to get you guys out in three steps. So the trigger step, remember, on that five-yard hitch that we were discussing, it's the foot that breaks you down. It's the foot that drops your hips. So ideally, you want that trigger step to be on your inside foot. You want to snap down. You want to bring your chest to your quad, and you want your lower body to drop into a 90-degree angle. This is pretty much textbook. I tell my wide receivers, you want to try to touch your chin to your knee, bring your chest down to your quad, and you want to sit your butt down to a 90-degree angle as fast and as violently as you can, because that is what's going to help you decelerate. When you're running and you change your center of gravity like this violently, that helps us put the brakes on on a dime. And again, the quicker I drop into the break, the less time a DB has to recover. Now on a comeback route, right? You snap down with that inside foot. Now what do you think your second step has to do? It has to pivot very, very similar to that five yard hitch. It's just, this is a little bit more complex because it's further downfield. And instead of snapping with your outside foot, you're snapping with the inside foot. So when you pivot your second step, snap, pivot. What's the third step do? It hooks around. And that third step hook drives you out of the break with some speed so you can separate from the DB. Because guys, at the end of the day, it's about selling vertical. It's about breaking on a dime or cutting on a dime with some explosion to get separation. And then my feet and my technique have to set me up to where I could keep that separation and run out. So it's a snap with the inside foot, like we said, snap, pivot, hook drive off the hook step, pump those arms so we could accelerate out of the break. That's how you run that 15 back to 12, 12 back to 10, 16 back to 14 yard comeback. The depth can vary, but this in a perfect world is what you would want. Usually against man-to-man -man coverage, guys, you never want to try to break off of your inside foot or your outside foot. If it's zone, I highly recommend breaking off that inside foot. Usually the route will be on your fourth inside step, fifth inside step, depending on the depth. But in a perfect world, we want to snap on that inside foot to eliminate any extra steps. Okay, so now, next route on the route tree, this is going to be a four. This is going to be a curl here from T. Higgins. So on a curl, it's pretty much the exact same concept as a comeback. Just now, you're obviously breaking towards the quarterback. You're curling back to the QB. Usually, it's probably about 12 back to 10 or 10 back to eight. And you're going to be in a perfect world. And again, against like zone coverage where you don't have press, you want to try to break off of your outside foot. Usually, a curl route will be on your fourth outside step. So what do I mean by that? So let's play this full speed, then I'll talk about it. So he comes off the ball. This one's actually off of his third outside step, but usually it's off of the fourth or the third outside step. So what I mean by that, and this is something that like a lot of you younger wide receivers should re get used to sooner rather than later. But when you get to that collegiate level, 
all of your routes when you are facing zone coverage are going to be off of steps. So like this route right here is a five step curl. Let's count all of his steps, right? So he goes one, two, three, four, five breaks right on the fifth step. Now, obviously as a wide receiver, we don't want to be sitting there counting to five. I don't want to be in the middle of the game, middle of the training, middle of practice going one, two, three, four, five, and I got a break because that's way too much to think about and you are going to play slow. So we want to simplify the process. And this why, and T. Higgins is not thinking about this in a game. He has repped it out so many times that this is a habit. It is second nature to him. But when we are training to simplify it, to get us comfortable counting steps, we only want to count the steps I take with my outside foot. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, coach, why can't I just break it 10 yards? Trust me, when you get counting steps down, it is 10 times faster than when you are running, looking down, waiting for the yardage, dropping your eyes, and, and kind of slowing down to make sure we break at a specific yard point. Trust your steps. So let's look at his steps here, right? So he comes off the ball. That's one. That's two. Then on the third outside, that is the trigger step. So since a curl is the opposite of a comeback, right? You want to break off the outside foot. That's the trigger step that gets me low. That's what drops my hips. And you see, what does he do? He brings that chest to his quad. Where's his lower body? 90 degree angle, chest to quad, chin to knee, and he is dropping violently. So now what do you think his inside foot has to do? Has to pivot. Third step has to hook, and now he's out of that thing in three specific steps. And he's able to either settle, if the ball's there right now, the ball's there right now, or he's in a position where he could accelerate and run back to the quarterback if it's a true 12 back to 10 yard curl. So guys, it's off the outside foot with that trigger step, ideally. Now, when we are doing routes off of steps, if we get press coverage, like let's say for example, I get an inside shade press coverage DB, and let's say I give him a move off the ball and my break, that's when it can turn into a landmark break, so you have to be able to do both as a wide receiver. You gotta be able to run off the steps, but you also gotta know that the depth of this break is at about 10 to 12 yards, right? So if it's 10 to 12, and let's say it's inside shade press coverage, you gotta do a release, and then we gotta break at 10 to 12. And sometimes that might be your inside foot. So you have to be able to do both. I recommend wide receiver do both but in a perfect world like i said this break is off your third outside you snap pivot hook coming back to that ball okay so now next route here this is going to be a five route on the route tree this is going to be a 10 yard speed out so um this 10 yard speed out we're going to be going over a situation here from stefan diggs where he has a db who's outside shade this is zone coverage right and now this db is sitting at about what like i would say this is about five ten he's maybe sitting about seven to eight yards and our break is at 10 yards right so if this db remember i said Routes are based off of how the DBs are playing us in terms of leverage and in terms of distance. So if this DB was lined up in press outside shade, what do you think Stefan Diggs would do? He would attack him off the line, take the inside release, and his goal would be to stack, which essentially means this DB would be trailing him. But since he is off sitting at seven to eight yards outside shade, it is the exact same way that you would have ran that five yard out with the DB sitting outside shade at three to four because he's sitting at the depth of the break point and his leverage is to where we are breaking. So where do you think we have to attack him? We have to attack his inside shoulder and his inside hip. Because remember, if we just try to run around him on this out route, what's he going to do? He's going to keep his leverage. The whole reason he's outside leverage is to prevent the outside route. So we just try to run, he's going to squeeze us to that sideline, and we're not going to have any room. So let's watch what Stephon Diggs does here. He comes off the ball, he attacks that inside shoulder, he gives a great rocker step move, and gives the quarterback room to throw him open, guys. That is the key. We need to give the quarterback on any outside route, an out route, a five-yard out route, a fade ball, a corner route, we have to give the quarterback room. If we don't give him room, we are running a bad route. Now, Diggs is obviously like leading up to that inside shoulder. We got to make sure we're selling fade. Got to make sure we're running hard. Good pad level, good speed. Now, that may not always work in this situation because where, where are they at on the field? They're in the red zone, right? They're almost inside the 10-yard line. So us putting my head down and running as hard as I can doesn't necessarily threaten this DB too, too much. He, reason why it doesn't threaten him too, too much is because... It, he's not threatened by a deep fade. He's threatened more by like an inside breaking route, right? Or he's threatened by, you know, some kind of route where he's got to put the brakes on. He's not threatened by us just running past him because there's an end zone there. If we run out the back of the end zone, we're not doing ourselves any favors. So Diggs at the top of this, he still attacks the inside shoulder, but he uses this move called a rocker step, which is essentially a one-two. You step in the direction you're going first one, and then you fake to the inside two, making it look like a post. We're still threatening his inside shoulder and inside hip, and we still have that space to the outside. So that shows how high level of IQ Diggs has. But again, that's how you would run that 10 yard out, 
versus that outside shade press cover or outside shade zone coverage guy who's about seven to eight yards away. And again, fellas, remember, if this is zone and we're in the middle of the field, by all means, you could just put your head down and run hard. You do not have to use that rocker step if we're in the middle of the field and he is threatened by a deep fade. Okay, so now we're going to look at this break here from Amon Ross St. Brown. He is going to be running a dig route, which is a six on the route tree. So let's play this full speed, then we'll break it down. So main thing I want to talk about on this dig are the different types of cuts on a dig route. So you see how St. Brown at the top of the break here, he uses something called like a square cut. So a square cut is essentially two steps at the top of the break, but there are many ways to run this dig route, right? Where you're going up maybe 10 to 12 and you're cutting straight across the field. It's not quite a post. It's not quite a curl. You are going straight across for those of you that don't know. So um, he's got like an outside shade press coverage guy. He attacks him, gives him a move and takes this inside release. So so anytime I would say on a dig, most important thing is just knowing the situations to use these different types of breaks. Cause you may have a coach on your program that likes his digs ran a certain way. Like there's a famous clip out there, maybe not famous, but there's a clip out there of Lincoln Riley talking about routes and he's head coach at USC, right? They obviously have a very explosive and powerful offense and it's built on speed. He says that he doesn't like his receivers on anything, doing anything but a speed cut. So a speed cut on a dig would be you're bursting up, and instead of St. Brown breaking on this like inside foot, he would just cut off of his outside foot and go right now. He wants everything to be fast. Now, some coaches may want you to have a little bit more control at the break point, less of a rounded break point. They may want you to run something called a basic, which is where you break down at, at the break point. You break off the inside foot. You could do a square cut, which is essentially two steps at the break. Some guys like their receivers to like full blown, like just do like a post dig where they cut off the outside foot. They take two steps to the post and then they flatten it off. So there are many different ways to run this dig. But when should you use these different techniques? So you see how St. Brown breaks down and does this square cut? I like it in this situation because he doesn't have the DB stacked. But if you have this DB stacked over the top and he is trailing running behind you, you don't want to break down. Because when you break down, you stop yourself. Very similar to that comeback or to that curl. So you see how St. Brown, when he breaks down, he's stopping himself. He's lowering his center of gravity. He's trying to decelerate. If he's got this DB completely stacked, that DB is going to run into him and there's going to be a collision. Whether it's PI or not, I don't want a collision. I want to be able to get separation. So if I have him stacked, that's when I would always use that single cut or maybe I use a rocker step like Diggs used whatever now if he's right on my hip I could easily break down because he's on my hip I could just push and get out if let's say for example this DB was inside shade Amon Ross St. Brown gave him a move took an outside release and this DB was right here and we had to slip under him that's the time I would drop my hips. So you can drop your hips against man-to-man -man when he's right on your hip, but if you have him stacked, I recommend a single cut. Against zone, I honestly think it's based off of coach's preference. And then when it comes down to the hip drop mechanics, guys, it's the same thing that we talked about on the curl, on the comeback. You've got to be violent. You've got to bring your chest to your quad, and you've got to bring your chin to your knee. So I want to go over that in the dig route. I think a dig route's an easy one, but there's so many different ways to run it, so I just want to make sure that you guys are clear on it. So now, this route here from Tank Dell is going to be a seven on the route tree, and this is a corner route. So a corner route here, we're going to talk about how you can run a corner versus an outside shade DB who is in something called catch technique, right? So obviously Tank Dell has got this stance switch here. Necessarily don't recommend that for this route every single time, but there are times for it and there are times not for it. And again, it, a lot of it depends on like the coach and what the coach's preference is on how he wants the route to be ran. But you can kind of see this DB shoe right here, but he is outside shade sitting at about two to three yards off. So remember, when he's outside shade, what's his goal? Don't let Tank Dell run to the outside. Force everything to the inside, which is where in a real game, not one-on-ones, he would have some kind of safety help, right? So if he's got safety help to the inside, and let's say we have to run like, you know, like a post route, and I just take off and go run, I'm running right into the safety help. He did his job, forced us to the inside. But his job is also don't give up the outside route. So as a receiver, I can't force it. He's just going to get hands, going to squeeze me to the outside, won't have enough space for my QB. What I got to do is I got to try to attack him. I got to threaten him to the outside, but take what he gives me with an inside release. And then my goal is the following. So let's play this full speed. So he attacks him, gives him a move, takes the inside release, and you see how he stacks him and gives him this break. Guys, that is what we want to do in this case. DB's outside shade two to three yards away. Remember, what dictates my release is the DB's leverage and the DB's distance, right? So if he was right up on the line of scrimmage, Tank Dell wouldn't need to do all this. 
He could just give him a quick jab and then go because this DB is right up in our face. But anytime a DB is two to three yards away and we have some space, we have to close the space. There's some distance between us two. I got to close the distance. So he closed the distance. He brings that line of scrimmage to him. Then he gives him this fake to the outside and takes that inside release. So now the goal is obviously to do what? stack over the top of him. So when we stack him, you see how Tank Dell gives a hard fake to the inside. He gives us like one, two fake, gets this DB to bite inside. And now we got all this room to the sideline for my quarterback to throw us open. That is how we want to run a corner versus this outside shade press. Now, what if we don't stack this DB? What if I give this move? And what if he is right hip to hip with me? What can I do? You could take this inside hand, put it on the back of his shoulder, back of his hip and slip under him. They call that a throw-by move. A quarterback, trust me, fellas, would rather have a bunch of space to throw you open, but over like the fastest break in the world with a forced outside release, right? So the throw-by move is okay to use. We just have to focus on giving the quarterback space to throw us open. And now, fellas, like, like again, like I'm talking about the hardest looks that you will see as a receiver. If we got inside shade press and I got to run a corner, that should be easy freaking money. We attack him, we close the distance, take the outside release, and then you got all this space to begin with. So, Guys, we're going over the harder looks because these are looks that are more common for you to see, I would say. So this is textbook. That's how you would run that corner versus that outside shade catch technique. So now, next example here is going to be C.D. Lamb running this quick post route. Now, what he uses at the top of this post route is something called a triple rocker step. So this is something that I want to break down for you guys just so you understand this move. This is by no means a move that you have to use, but this is something that you could use anytime you face an off coverage DB and you have to run a post to make it look like other routes. Something that the best wide receivers do is they're able to pair their routes together. Let's say, you know, a wide receiver runs a lot of out routes and he runs a lot of post routes, right? Like CeeDee Lamb does. That's something that they do a lot of. You want to try to make your post route look exactly like your out route in terms of the moves that you are choosing at the top of the break. So let's talk about how we're able to do that. So he comes off the ball and he uses this one, two, three at the top of the break, gets that DB to jump. He's able to get space and win on this post route. So now, again, if you were running an out route, do you guys remember what Stefan Diggs on his out, did on his out route? He did that rocker step, right? So he broke with his left foot first, faked with his right foot like he was running a post, and then ran an out route. Now, smart DBs, usually what they like to do is they like to watch a lot of film. They watch a lot of film to be able to understand what moves wide receivers like to use, what different, you know, like um, like releases they like to use, the different route combinations that offenses will use. DBs watch film like crazy, right? So they watch move of our they watch film of our moves. If every time I run an out route, I do something called a rocker step, guess what they're gonna be expecting the second they see that one, two? They're gonna be expecting an out route if I do that every time. So I could add a little sauce to this thing. I could give an out route, I could give it like a fake like I'm doing an out route. I could give a one, two, Three, make it look like I'm doing the out, DB jumps, and then all of a sudden I got him on the post. So now I'm in this guy's head. I could run a post off of a single step. I could do a post off of an inside rocker. I go right, then left, and then I break to the post. Now maybe I could do an out route off of a left, then a right fake. Maybe I could do an out route off of a right, left, right. So I do a triple rocker. It's like the reverse of this. I'm pairing my routes and my moves together. And that's ultimately what CD Lamb does here. So I just want to showcase that to you guys so you could see it. Another great receiver to study this on is Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup runs a lot of posts and he runs a lot of outs and he makes them all look very, very similar. So again, triple rocker step by no means is it a move you have to do. Maybe you run all your out routes off of just a single inside step with the right foot. So when you have to run a post route, you burst up and then we give the right foot cut fake with the left, you do a single rocker step, and then we got the ball. So it's not a one-size-fits-all move, but it's good to understand this concept because obviously CeeDee Lamb is a successful wide receiver, and you should try to add those tools to your game. So now, let's get on to the final route that you were all waiting for, which is a fade route, right? So fade route, you are going to see sometimes as a wide receiver a catch technique DB. Right, And we kind of briefly talked about this in some other examples. But a catch technique DB is, what, what's his goal playing catch technique? To essentially catch us and to get hands on us, right? So he's playing two yards away from us for a reason. He wants us to pick a release. So Amari Cooper's running a fade here. So you guys probably know this. DB shaded a little bit to the inside and he's two to three yards off. Anytime that we have space between us and a DB, what do I have to do with that space? I have to close that space. I got to eat up the cushion and I got to try to step onto his toes. So when I come off the ball, this DB is taught when you have space, 
to keep the space. So when Cooper comes off the ball, you see how he does it here. You see how this DB starts to inch back a little bit. That's a legitimate DB technique that they will teach. They call it an inch back technique, word for word, because they're trying to keep the space because they're hoping that when that wide receiver attacks us and we keep inching back, keeping this space, he eventually has to pick a release. He eventually has to get on with his route. So if it's a fade route and we just try to run, he could catch us, quote unquote, get hands and force us to the sideline. So as a receiver, when I see this look, we want to do exactly what Amari Cooper does right here. He comes off the ball, he closes space, but then he speeds up because again, a DB cannot inch back as fast as we can run. So he comes off the ball here. He gives this little hesitation move, sees the inch back. Okay, great. I got to eat up that cushion even more and I got to quicken up my tempo. Press releases, guys. We talked about it throughout this whole video, having a plan. A DB's playing this leverage, you want to do this. A DB's playing this distance, you want to do that. But sometimes as a receiver, you're a point guard in basketball. You're just reacting off of dudes. You're closing the space, you're reacting. Press releases are all about plans and all about reacting. So this DB starts inching back. What does Cooper does? Okay, great. I'm going to close the space. I'm going to change up the tempo. I'm going to quicken up the tempo and eat the cushion, give him a fake inside. Now we're close. And again, he gets, I don't want to say gets lucky. He just straight up schools the guy. But again, even if he doesn't make him fall, like even if he just gets him to kind of hesitate for a second, it's way easier to get skinny to him and stack over the top of him because we're close to him now, right? So this is exactly how you would want to approach that catch technique DB on a fade route. If he starts inching back, continue to eat up that cushion so I could get up into my fade route and get plenty of separation.